Hey everyone, we uh, just worked with CloudFormation. Now I want to go ahead and use Terraform as Terraform is a very, very, very uh, popular multi-cloud solution for IAC. And it's definitely something that in the industry you'll come across. Uh, you might ask, why would people use a third-party IAC tool when uh, AWS has CDK, CDK, SAM, CloudFormation? Well, it has to do with multi-cloud workloads. It might just be easier for development. Um, there are a variety of reasons why. But, you know, the right tool is based on what your team wants to do and your business use case. So we should learn a bit about Terraform. So what I'm going to do is open up our AWS examples here and get rolling. As that's going, we'll need to install the Terraform CLI. So I'm going to go over and type in Terraform CLI. And we'll go over to um, the documentation here. I'm going to type in install. And I'm going to get that configured in my Git pod, of course. Uh, if you're not using Git pod, you're using a different cloud developer environment or local uh, developer environment. These instructions are going to vary. Uh, I'm not going to show you every variation. It's too hard to do that, but um, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So here, what I want to do in my uh, Git pod file, I'm just going to add a new uh, new task here. We'll just say name and we'll say Terraform. And then I'm going to add a before with a pipe so I can do multi-line. And then we'll go ahead and grab the installation instructions. This stuff is pretty straightforward. So we'll go to Linux here. And, uh, you know, there are, like, there's homebrew and stuff like that. I don't really want to install it via homebrew. We could do that on Linux. Uh, I'm on Linux. I, I Again, I kind of prefer to do it uh, this way, Ubuntu Debian. Notice there's a, a simpler version for Linux, but it varies based on what you're using. So Gitpod is using Debian underneath. So we're going to stick with, I think it's Debian. It's either Debian or Ubuntu. So we're going to just go ahead and work with this. And it's pretty straightforward. We just go down the line here. Paste, paste, paste. I'm not going to do multi-line for this. I'm just going to let those pipes happen like that. And, uh, you know, make sure you read the instructions here. I'm copying and pasting because I've done this hundreds of times and I've read it before. But if it's your first time doing it, go read through the docs. Sometimes, like Google, will, if you go down the line, they'll actually have, like, different ways that you can do it. And you can't copy paste it all the way down. And uh, then you'll wonder why it's not working. Happened to me a couple times. So, you know, I'm just looking here and just making these single single lines here. Bring this on to its own line. Whoops, 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 whoops. Sometimes the copy paste messes up here. I'm just gonna double check that. It looks like that's cut off now. The copy paste here is notoriously a finicky. So I have GPG here. That one's good. I'm just gonna. Redo that here. I'm going to give myself some room as I copy paste. Uh, we'll grab this one here. Just grab that in full. And I'm going to paste that in. And I'll grab the next line here. And I'll grab the next line here. We could also extract these out as scripts and then run just the script. That's totally an option as well. I'm not sure why we're not doing that as that probably would be <laughs> a bit easier, but I didn't think of that till now. So we have this, this is piping. So this is gonna be a single line over here as such. Okay, so we'll do this. Great, and so that should install it. That should install it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a dry run down here and then I'll restart this to make sure it installs. Go ahead, copy, and we'll paste this in. We'll hit enter. And uh, that stuff here is fine. You should expect to see that. And I'm just going to type in Terraform. Good. So the Terraform CLI is now installed. What I'm going to want to do is just commit this and save this for later. So I'll go ahead and just save this. Say, uh, um, save Terraform install. And again, you could make this a bash script. You just take all these commands, put it in a bash script and then just run it manually. That's another way of doing it. That's actually probably how I would do it in uh, GitHub code spaces. But uh, so we've committed that uh, that there. I have to commit it for to restart this workspace because I wanted to install every time I launch this environment up. Of course, if uh, you want to, you can always just click that and have these tools installed and work with them and play around with them. But we'll let that uh, stop and we'll spin up a new one as that is going here. Come on, workspace, there we go. Is it launching a new one or the old one? Because I don't want the uh, the existing one. <laughs> I want a new one. I think it's launching a new one. Now, the thing with um, 
Terraform is that the seal, like the, when you use it locally, it's going to store the state file here. When we use CloudFormation, you didn't have a state file. It's, it went straight to the cloud. You never know what it looks like. But, uh, you know, Terraform is a little bit different. What we'll do is we'll go into S3 and we'll go into IC and we will make a new folder here. I'm going to call it Terraform. Hopefully it's at the right level here. Good. I think that's right. That doesn't look right. I'm going to just drag that onto IC. That looks better. Good. And we'll make a new file here and we'll call it main.tf. Um, Terraform is interesting because you can create multiple uh, files and they can get rolled up really easily. So, uh, you know, I could create one file here and then another file for the S3. And I might just do that just to show that, that, that Terraform can do that. So let's say uh, Terraform here. And we want to configure the AWS, uh, the AWS to work with Terraform. So I'm going to go and type in Terraform registry to go ahead and get the, um, well, that's not what I want. <laughs> Somebody's paying an ad to, to uh, beat out Terraform. But we'll go here to the Terraform registry and we'll go to providers. And providers is basically your connection to uh, the cloud provider. We'll go ahead and grab this code as that's what we need to start a configuration. So say allow, and so we say require the provider. This one's 526, uh, 526. If this is the future, this code might need some tweaking because they update these providers often and uh, it can break the uh, syntax here. But the Terraform provider basically provides um, API access to uh, the cloud service provider and it also will have primitives in terms of um, objects. So on the left-hand side, there's one here for S3. Over here on the left hand side somewhere there's one for s3 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 where are you it's all alphabetical i just gotta stick with it here here uh that's route 53 s3 simple storage good s3 bucket all right so here's a very simple example and so uh the way the syntax works is it always starts with AWS because that's the provider then the service s3 and then the object or resource so bucket so we have a bunch of stuff in here and so this is the very simple example so I'll go ahead and copy this in here. Now I can place it right down here below, but I'm actually going to place it in the, well, <laughs> I meant to put all this stuff in the main TF, but we'll paste this into here and we will cut this out of here and we'll put this in our main file. All right. Uh, now we can provide our credentials here, but since we've set them in our environment variables, they're going to get loaded into, um, they're going to get loaded into uh, this uh, uh, naturally. Now, when you're looking to configure any uh, provider, they always have it on the first page, I noticed. So if you go up to AWS provider here, they'll explain authentication and there's different methods. So this is the one we're doing, environment variables, but uh, there is definitely a lot of ways you can configure it. It's gonna be dependent on your uh, team and use case, but this is the way that's gonna be easy for us. Anyway, so we have the provider here and that doesn't need anything additional. Um, at least I don't think it does. And so here we're just typing the resource type so it's going to be a bucket, and this is going to be the name of the the logical name of the the resource. I didn't talk about this in CloudFormation, but when we go back over to CFN for just a moment here, notice we have S3 bucket here. We can name this whatever we want. We say my S3 my S3 uh, bucket, and this is a logical name that will show up in um, uh, as a reference to that thing. It doesn't show up in our code or anywhere else. It's just more like how do we know? How do we uniquely identify? Uh, a resource within our um, template. So we can call this um, my S3 bucket. I think we can do hyphens there. And here we have the bucket name. Now I want it to be randomized. So I'm just gonna take out the name. I think we can do that. And we'll have some tags for fun here. We'll leave those alone. And so this should, in theory, create ourselves an S3 bucket. I'm gonna go down below here, go to our Terraform tab where Terraform is installed. Just type in clear. And I'm gonna type in uh, Terraform init. It says Terraform initialize an empty directory. Uh, that's because we're in the wrong folder. It's looking for Terraform files. So we'll, we'll go CD into the correct uh, directory here. We'll type in clear and we'll type in Terraform init again. And so what it's going to do, it's gonna pull some stuff that we need. So it's going out to the internet and we make this hidden uh, folder called .terraform. And it's actually downloaded a binary for the Terraform provider. And we have a lock file to lock what versions we are using. So that's really useful. Uh, we don't really want all that stuff there. So I'm going to go get a git ignore for Terraform. And I just dump that in my uh, my uh, file there. So we'll go ahead and just copy this. I'll go over to here. Oh, apparently I haven't created one yet. Okay, well, we'll make one now. Git 
ignore. I'll ignore that as I really don't want to commit those binaries. They're, they're really large and they'll cause issues. And so I just want to individually commit my git ignore. So add a git ignore. We'll commit that separately first. And I'm just going to commit that and sync that. Um, anyway, so what we'll do here now that we uh, initialize it, we can go ahead and type in Terraform plan. So Terraform plan is going to, it's like kind of like the change set when we saw it in, um, in CloudFormation, it's going to confirm what's going to happen. So here it's saying, and th this is basically a change set. That's what this is. But we're, see we're seeing, okay, we're gonna create a resource. Here are all the pr uh, properties on the resource. Uh, it's going to not know until it actually we do it apply because it will we'll only know after creation. This is going to create it in our CA Central one as we did not specify a, um, a region. But anyway, this looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and say Terraform apply. And that's going to go ahead and deploy that. It wants us to confirm. So we'll write in yes down below. I like how Terraform tells us by default to uh, confirm it. We're going to go over here to the left hand side. Look that there's now a TF state file. If we look at this, this file can contain sensitive information. So of course you do not want to commit this to your repo, but this is our state file. If we lose this file, we lose the state of it and we can no longer uh, keep track of the state. And that means that we'd have to manually tear down the, um, the file. So make sure you do not get rid of this file. You really need to keep it. If not, you'll have to be tearing things down manually within AWS. So we have this, let's make our way over to um, I want to show you in CloudFormation, there is nothing in there because this has nothing to do with CloudFormation. So just be aware that uh, we're in CA Central and there is no nothing here. Terraform is its own thing, okay? If we go back over to um, uh, S3, and now let's go see if that resource is actually there. And I don't know what the name of this is. It's down here below, Terraform, and it has a big old number down below here. So that's what it generated. So this is... Um, the thing that we created. Now, the interesting thing is that we can manage other things with Terraform. We could actually even create um, objects. And um, we didn't do this in CloudFormation because I don't think it's possible, but in Terraform, you technically could create objects and do all sorts of things here. Um, you don't really want to do that. Um, often, like if you're if it's data, you really don't want to put that in IAC tools generally because um, IAC is for infrastructure. And sometimes you don't even want to put uh, buckets in Infrastructure really depends on your use case, uh, but um, in what we're doing, it's totally fine. So that's all we wanted to really show for Terraform. Let's go ahead and tear that down. If you wanna learn more about Terraform, I got a Terraform course, you can go through it. I just wanna get you through the basics here so you're a little bit comfortable with it and you know how to at least get the CLI installed to work with it. So that is our simple example. It says it's destroyed it. Let's go back and confirm. We'll give this a refresh, it says it's gone. Well, there's an error because it's gone now, so that's good. And I say that would be good enough for Terraform. Let's go ahead and commit our changes. Again, we'll make sure there's no state file there, that's good. Uh, we'll just say Terraform, CLI, simple, Terraform, simple S3 example. Very good. All good, and we will see you in the next one. I'm gonna stop this workspace, and we'll move on to something next. All right, ciao.